Hello, this is Sune from Four Sound Copenhagen. I'm here at Roskilde Festival with the legendary Thomas Hake of Meshuga. Hello, Thomas, and welcome. Good day, sir. You are now playing at Roskilde for the what time? I I don't know. I think it's the f third or fourth time, maybe. I I really I'm really bad at keeping track of <laughs> where we play and 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 when, you know. Right. So uh, I think it's the third time. It could be the fourth, but yeah. It's definitely the third time. I've seen you here two times before. So okay. Uh, I think last time was 2010 or something. Yeah, that's yeah. probably right. Yeah. All right. So you guys just finished recording uh, a new album. Mm -hmm. What was the the process like this time? Uh, I think uh, what I want to know is compared to the last time, since you had a very special process writing and recording uh, yeah. plus. Actually, the writing process is pretty much the same. It's pretty similar. It's um, I've, I've been working a lot with uh, Dick, the bass player, so we've we've written a lot of stuff together. I've worked with Morten on some stuff and some songs, and uh, that's all like in a computer environment, you know, from yeah. the get-go. It's you know programming drums, whatever kind of riffs are coming up, and and that, that's the way we've been doing it for many years now. Uh, the difference this time was the actual studio time. This time we actually rehearsed, so we kind of knew the songs before studio. So, uh, and we recorded it at Puk Studio in Denmark with uh, Tuya Madsen, who's done some tremendous work with, with The Haunted, among other bands. And uh, the difference this time with this album is it's all live takes. There's no editing. There's no making it sound like machines anymore. Because uh, I just think at, at this point, we're just... Personally, at least, I was just sick of that sound, and there's so many bands that do that now. It's like Beat Detective, 60%. It doesn't even sound like humans, you know? No. Uh, and with that, you lose the energy. So we wanted to do something, kind of go back to more old school way of doing it, and that's what we did on this time, this time around. And uh, so a lot more drum playing, because you need to have like good takes. So right. a lot of takes, like tw 10 to 20 takes of each song, and then to, so you would have to. Then you, you know, used to your cut and paste with different sections of the yeah, different takes. Yeah, but doing that instead of correcting what's wrong, you right, choose a right. take where you're actually playing it right. You know. And were you happy with that result? Or yeah, uh, definitely. Instead of going for the, it's, for the, it's not like as it's not perfect in any sense, and it's not maybe the way people have gotten used to hearing the sugar, how there's no flaws or faults or anything. Right. This one actually has flaws, and it has, you know, it's not always 100% right. tight. But you if you, you add something else, that you, you, you're lacking, I think, when everything is like too, too much, like just edited to sound perfect. You know. Do you think people who will be listening to the new album will be, um, uh, will be able to hear the flaws, or is it just something that you guys are? Of are course, hearing? it's always more obvious to us. Yeah. Uh, but if they know that it's recorded live, I think they can definitely hear that, you mm. know. And that's something that obviously we want to be there in there as well, you know. They, um, they, Dave Grohl once described it as charisma because he got tired of listening to perfect albums. Yeah. So he was like, you know, we want to keep the little flaws in there because yeah. it makes it human, it makes it us. Yeah. And also all the, for every one of us in the band, all our favorite albums of any time have always been where you hear the people play. Right. It very rarely does any one of us pay any real attention to music that is really like just beat detective and everything's moved to sound perfect. Because to some extent it kills the music, you know. What was your setup on the recording? Did it change from song to song or was it the same thing? No, pretty much it's pretty much the same thing all the way through. The guitar rig, since I mean, the last few albums we recorded, it, it's all been digital stuff, and this time we had a whole bunch of amps, a whole bunch, a whole room actually filled with amps and and uh, and uh, cabs. Uh, so we could we 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 could uh, opt for like having a little more of this amp in one song and a a little more of that one in another song. So that's the only kind of really things that we tweaked a little bit. The guitar sounds are not the same, the exact same from song to song. Right. So it does differ a little bit. Which which I guess is also a different approach from um, from the guitar player since I just saw the documentary that you guys, of uh, the recording of your previous album. Mm. 
where they talk about how they are able to change everything all the time and they never you know they never finish they're yeah. never completely satisfied yeah but i guess this time if you're recording live and it's through amps then this is what you, you have, have to and you have and to accept it yeah yeah, yeah. because uh, i mean if you're only doing digital uh you can sit there and reamp for years yeah and, exactly uh, and uh, like like he said it's it's how are you ever satisfied right if there's always like well it sounds good now but i think uh, the other <laughs> side of the rainbow <laughs> <laughs> Just past the unicorns, there could be, you yeah. know, another guitar yeah. sound, you know. So I, I think it's a good thing too. This was all, a lot more about you have those three weeks for recording, and that's, and then you're all done, right, and you have to let it go, you know. We did, uh, we did additional guitars like solos and stuff afterwards, um, but that that was pretty much it. Yeah. Right. In and, uh, and your drums on the recordings, what was the setup like? Just pretty regular what I've been what I've been doing now as far as the drums themselves. The, the main difference is I on this album I went back to old school drums, 24 inch kicks that were just 14 inch deep and uh, shallow toms, like lightweight drums. Um, I mean, when you put a mic and you put microphones on everything and then you, it doesn't really matter that much. If the drums sound good, they're gonna come out sounding good, you know. So. Uh, Apart from that, it was just kind of the regular setup that I, I've been doing over the last, you know, bunch of years. Mm. Just one rack tom centered and two floors and two kicks, bunch of cymbals, you know. Right. And and speaking of your setup, uh, it has changed a bit over the past 10 years or so. Oh, yeah, You've been yeah. stripping away uh, toms yeah. and placed them differently, like experimenting with um, yeah, with uh, uh, just the setup in general, it looks like. Yeah. And uh, what what happened, and and uh, what what uh, prompted that, you to make the change? That's ergonomics. Right. It's more or less all ergonomics. Uh, I sat for so many years, like playing cymbals far out here. Right. Uh, I, my my shoulders are ruined, basically. I didn't want to. I, I could have surgery, but I've so far I've tried to not have to do that if I if I can help it. Uh, so basically, I took a drum set that went from here to here and just. When, when you move your arm out and you feel you start to feel a resistance like this is as far out as I go now yeah. I don't have anything beyond that really no you have pretty point. much everything centered like, yeah. from here and up yeah. upwards that's that's where and you also have. things are uh, th people are surprised when they sit at my kit how close everything is mm. um, I don't feel it like that now but I, I do understand it where previously I would be reaching for stuff you know you like playing like this and you're playing like that right now it's all just everything is kind of I don't have to go back or forth in the seat or do anything like that mm. so it's it's all about injuries making it a necessity for me to to do something about how I was playing you know, right how I was setting it yeah um, and, and speaking of changing, how about your bass drum technique? Is that something that has ever caused you to, to change your approach to, uh, to how, you, how you play um, uh, the double bass drum these days than what you used to? Uh... No, not really. Uh, I have terrible technique actually for bass drums. I, I plant my foot, I plant it on the head and I yeah, lean I, on it, yeah. you know. Uh, so for me, for example, using plastic beaters won't work because no. They melt because of that friction, because you're always leaning on the head. Uh, and also it's kind of weird because you put your balance in your feet instead of kind of up here. Um, but it's, it's what I always play like that's so hard to change it, you know. Right. But uh, as most drummers know, you want to you want to play off the head like that. Mm. But I just I just can't, you know, it takes years and years to learn that and especially maybe to relearn take away this yeah. uh, technique and completely redo it, you have to really give it a lot of time and effort. Yeah. Uh, so I, I haven't gotten around to that. So my, my bass drum technique is actually not good at all. It's really hard for me to play really fast for long periods of time because I just, I use too much energy and force when I, when I play. Uh, but a song like Bleed, for example, is different. And that, that's the only time I really change my approach a little bit because that's okay. more that's more like tap dancing almost on the pedals, and it, the, the the hits are very light. Right. So I have to use triggers, you know, to uh, to get all the sounds out there. If you heard it only acoustically, since the right kick is doing the dung, the dung, the it would 
you would mostly hear the second hit only, and right. it wouldn't sound. Da -da 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 it was on the. Okay. You know, so you you would kind of lose it by the, by doing that. So uh, once we wrote that song and wanted to do it live, I started using triggers on the kicks, and now I I, I use it for for all the songs. Yeah. So that in that beat in particular is is um is so incredible and so um uh it's so hard to get to get your head around. Not so much um understanding the concept of what's happening. But yeah. it's for whole six minutes, and it just goes on, and it's so it's so yeah, different all the time. It kind of. What, what did you think when you, when you got presented with that song? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no way, man. That's kind of how I felt. Right. And uh, originally, uh, Frederick wrote that song. He, he didn't really write it for us as a band because he never thought that even himself that he could play the whole song through because it's really hard on your arms too. Right. As a guitar player and bass player. So it was more like an experiment for him, um, in a way. And then we, the rest of us really loved it, and we, we were kind of on it. We're like, let's at least let's give it a try. Let's see if we if we can do it. But it's uh, it took me at least a half a year to to learn of both that kind of technique I had to use, and also to learn the song as such. Right. You know, so. That I've never spent any anywhere near that amount of time on any song previous or after, and for obvious reasons when you hear it, because it's not only the basic pattern; it's also no. the the development of that pattern in, in so many different ways. So, yeah, yeah, because it sort of start, starts out with the with the parts in three, and then next section it parts of five, mm -hmm. and then it just, you know, the, yeah. the system and then it's just fucked. <laughs> <laughs> the system just Pretty gets much. lost. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, you use the Roland triggers, yeah. And what sounds are you triggering? Is that from from your own samples? Or? Yeah. Right now we're using uh, this is the same samples we've been using for a bunch of years now. But right. uh, I really want to change them out. So right now I actually do also microphones in the kicks that I just fill up a little bit to get mm -hmm. a little bit of a kind of more normal sounding kick drum in my ears. I don't think uh, uh, our front of house guy he's not going to use it out he's probably just going to use the triggers because they're all right obviously it's really easy to work with you know um, but I'm trying to I'm looking into doing some another sample that's not as different because what basically what I'm using is a is a is a, a muffled 24 inch kicks this is a sample a muffled 24 inch kick for the attack and then it's like an open 26 inch Ludwig kick for the after and that has no correlation with like a 22-inch kick drum with a with a, a pillow in it. You know, I don't like the sound of a 22-inch kick with a pillow in it because it's just dead. Yeah. But uh, that's also because of this technique that if I leave it open, it's just gonna bounce on the head. You know, so I gotta muffle the head. So somewhere in between what it feels like to play a kick like that and the sound of a bigger drum, you know, I guess would be. Uh, Kind of where I would opt for, right. but uh, but we'll see. And so far, we're just using the same, same same sound we've been using now for for a while. You also still play um, the Sonor uh, yeah. SQ2 drums. You have yes. been for a couple of years now. Yeah, I I have a Pro Light kit. The the last of uh, the new album we uh, we recorded is with the Pro Light kit, hmm. uh, and uh, I use SQ drums, Pro Light drums. It doesn't really matter, you know. A lot of the times when we're out playing, it'll if, if it's flying shows and stuff like that, it will be either pro lights that they send there or uh, sometimes delight drums. And it doesn't really matter. Whatever whatever drum set I get, they always sound fantastic, you know. Right. Yeah. I've been with, with Sonar for, for uh, I think, not 20 years, but maybe 15, 16 years or something like that now. And, um, you know, they just make, make the greatest drums to me, you know. And uh, Sapien Symbols? Yeah. For some years also now? Yeah, a lot of years with them too. Um, probably closer to 20 years. Right. Yeah. And uh, same thing there. I think they're the best, most innovative brand out there. Uh, I can have symbols that sound like a nice jazz symbol, but they can take a beating of a metal drummer. I don't know. It's uh, my, uh, my experiences previous is 
to to uh, Sabin's was that was a very difficult combination. Mm. You chose like either or. You either get a symbol that kind of sounds a little shady, but it can take a beating, or you would get a nice sounding symbol <laughs> and you go, okay, right. that's it, thank you. All you right. know. So uh, with Sabin's, it's, it, they have a lot. They have so many different series and so many models right now that there's something for everyone, regardless if you how you hit or what kind of sound you're looking for. So I, you know, to me they're the, they're the greatest brand that there, there is in the market right now. And um, I think for the, for the final part here, uh, uh, since we just mentioned, we just talked about earlier how you were, you're trying to avoid uh, straining your body without mm -hmm. reaching too far back and trying to avoid injuries and um, how uh, do, you, do you try to avoid injuries or just the, in general uh, wearing of your body in any other way when talking about being off the kit, like some um, exercises or oh, and, yeah. and and warming up, of course, before before yeah. going on stage. Yeah, I don't have like much of a ritual as far as I do some stretches, like you know, basic arm stretches and stuff like that, and I basically my my legs I just warm up by doing this on the floor for like 45 minutes all right um, and that's that's pretty much what I do as far as warm-up um, I do stretches of like these I'll hold like a door and get a good stretch out here because sometimes well my arm will like fall asleep when we play because it's all like tight you know around right. the shoulder but I do exercises on a daily basis there, there's a lot of stretching exercises and I it's not regular yoga, but what I do at home is very similar to yoga, except that it's also certain exercises, uh, like with weights and, and kettle weights and stuff like that that I do. Right. Uh, it's not hardcore by any means. It's just I do that maybe half an hour to 40 minutes a day, uh, in, in stretches and workout included, and that helps me at least to kind of maintain where it doesn't hurt when I play. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, well, great. Thank you. I think Thank just you. one final question um, that, um, and it may sound a bit strange, but I is, like strange. Right. Yeah. It's, is your music um, different? Strange. Diffi yeah. It's I know, but strange. is it is it difficult for you in general to play? What goes through your mind when you're on stage and you play? Uh, you go off on some uh, beat that won't turn around until you reach the measure of yeah. 35 or something like that of course it's of yeah. course it's definitely it's definitely difficult i there's a lot of parts of songs that i i never i, I i'm probably never gonna feel completely like i can relax i have to always be focused and, and like you said some parts of some songs that we do is if you lose it in there it's like how the fuck do you get out of there <laughs> you know and some parts are really hard you know like that so um I, I, I can never really rest and like just sit back and enjoy the ride. It's definitely a lot of focus and uh, uh, every night there's something that is messed up. You mess something up always. All but, right. uh, if you're lucky, people don't really notice. If you're unlucky, they notice. I guess it's can, it can be kind of hard to save that one when you suddenly get lost in the middle of those yeah. parts. I like it when the rest of the band has to turn around and they look <laughs> at you. That's my that's the favorite. Preferably in front of like 20,000 people. That's a solid feeling right there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's nice to know then. Thomas, thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the festival and uh, play a great show tonight. All and right, uh, keep a watch out for your bandmates tonight. Then. I will. Hopefully they don't have to turn around. <laughs>